This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on guys? So in the last video, I got a comment that was pretty popular. It was just liked a bunch of times where they asked to do a video on pagination or pagination, however you want to say it. And it's kind of a tough subject because it's there's so many different ways to do it. Um, you know, you have you have it where you can keep making requests to your server and you get a certain amount from the database or you can have front-end pagination, which is what we're doing, where you make an initial request for, let's say, 100 different posts, and then you create the functionality so you can have maybe five per page or 10 per page. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're not gonna be doing any server-side stuff, uh, but you can use this in a lot of different situations. And this is a good way to do it if, you, if you're not, if you don't have thousands and thousands of um, you know resources, whatever it is, posts or whatever. Uh, if you have a hundred or so, then this is a pretty good way to do it. Just within React, you don't have to deal with any backend stuff or anything like that. So what we're going to do is grab a bunch of posts. This is um, Jason Placeholder dot I use this all the time. It's a fake REST API, and you can see right here if we click on posts, we get a hundred different posts. And my goal in this video is to make it so we can output these posts in our React application, but make it so we can show five per page or 10 per page and then have some nice, you know, pagination numbers at the bottom that we can scroll through. And we're going to be using Bootstrap for the styling. All right, so let's jump in. I just have my Create React app. I did clean it up a little bit. As you can see, I just deleted some of the files. Um, just have a simple app, app component, functional component. We are going to be using hooks, um, so we're not using classes or anything like that. Uh, and then in my index.html, you can see I just brought in Bootstrap. So that's pretty much it if you want to get up to speed. I also installed Axios uh, so that we can make our requests. All right, so let's start off uh, in the app.js. I'm going to import Axios because the first thing I want to do is just get the posts. Okay, so we'll bring that in. Now we're going to be using a couple hooks. So right here from React, we're going to bring in use state, which just allows us to use state within a functional component. And then use effect allows us to basically mimic some of the lifecycle methods within a class based component. And what we want to do is when the component mounts, we want to fire off the request to get the posts. And so we'll use use effect for that. So inside our app component above the return, let's create our state values using use state. So we're going to go ahead and set posts. And then we have what we do is we set a, a method to change that piece of state, which we're going to call set posts. And then we just set that to use state and then whatever we want as the default for posts, which is going to be an empty array. So it's just like having, you know, your state object. Um, you know, if you had posts, empty array, same thing, except we don't have to call this dot set state and all that crap. We just call set posts. So hooks are really cool. If you're interested in learning more, I do have a course react front to back 2019 that, uh, you know, has a couple projects where we use this stuff. So let's see, we're also going to have loading since we're fetching data from an API. Let's say set loading. And that's going to be set to false by default. Now for the pagination, we're going to have a couple things in our state. For that, we're going to have the current page. We'll call this set current page. Use state and the default is going to be one. Of course, we want to be on page one to begin with. Then we're going to have posts per page. So how many do we want per page? And we'll set that to use state and let's do 10. And you can easily change it after. All right, so we have our state. <clears throat> now we want to make our request. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to use use effect. And this takes in an arrow function. 
Now we could do axios dot get and do dot then the standard promise syntax, but I want to use a sync await. Now you can't put or you shouldn't put a sync on to use effect whatsoever. So you want to create a new function. So we're going to say const fetch posts equals a sync. And in here we'll go ahead and first of all set loading to true because we're in the process of fetching. And then we'll make our request, put it into a response variable. So let's do await axios dot get. And then the URL is going to be this. So we'll grab that and put that right in here. Okay, then we're going to set the posts to the response data. So res dot data and then let's set loading. set loading back to false. All right. Now we just created the function. We have to call it. So let's say fetch posts. Oops. So fetch posts. Now the way use effect works, if you're not familiar with it, it, it runs whenever the component mounts. What is this? Oh, never mind. Uh, it runs when the component mounts, but it also runs whenever it updates. And when this runs, it's going to update the component. So what will happen is it'll be a never ending loop. Now to stop that, we simply pass in an empty set of brackets. Okay, this is where you would put dependencies where, you know, if you wanted it to run when something specific change, you could put that in here. But we're just going to leave this blank, which makes it kind of mimic the component did mount lifecycle method. So it'll only run when it mounts, which is what we want. Okay, so now let's. Uh, Let's just uh, let's console. Let's make sure we're getting these actually. So we'll just do a console log of posts. And if we go back to our application, you can see that we're getting these posts right here. Yeah, so it's a hundred posts, I believe. All right, so let's um, try to think here. We're going to have a separate post component that we're going to pass them into. And then within that component, we're going to loop through. So let's create a new folder in source called components. And let's create post JS. All right. So post JS, um, I have the I have the ES7 react Redux extension where I can just do RACF. That'll create an arrow function component. And this is going to take in a couple props. So I'm going to destructure props and pull out posts and loading. Okay, and we'll go right here and let's first make sure that it's done loading because you saw in the console log it had an empty array and then it had the post. So we just want to make sure they're loaded. So let's say if loading, then let's just return. We'll return an H2 and say loading. Or you could put a spinner or whatever you want. And then down here, uh, let's do a, a UL and we're using bootstrap. So I'm just going to add in a class name. What's going on with my typing class name of list group and also margin bottom four. And then within here, we're going to loop through our posts that are passed in. So posts dot map. And we'll say for each post, let's output an li. We have to give it a key since this is a list and our key will be the post dot ID. And let's also give this a class name of list group item. And then within here, we're just simply going to put the post dot title. OK, so that should be it for our post component. Now let's go back to app JS and let's let's first of all change this. We'll say uh, let's just say my blog, but I want to make it look a little decent. So we'll give this a class name of text primary and let's do margin bottom. Uh, we'll say margin bottom three. I also want to push everything down a little, so we'll do margin top five for the container. All right, so we're going to insert posts. Now remember, post takes in posts as a prop. It also takes in loading. I 
like that. All right, so let's save. Post is not defined. We didn't bring it in. Okay. So now let's go back and there we go. So we have 100 posts which, you know, this is too much. We want to narrow this down and implement our pagination. So we're going to add some extra logic here and I'm going to do it right above the return. All right, so we'll say get current posts. And we're going to have three lines of code here. First thing we want to do is get the index of the last post. So I'm going to call this index of last post and this is going to be set to the current page and we're going to multiply that by the post per page and that should give us the index of the last post now we want the index of first post and the way we get that is take the index of the last post and subtract the posts per page and then the last thing we want to do is get current posts and let's set that to this post the state which is all the posts but we want to slice and then pass in the index of the first post and the index of the last post so that'll slice out the 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 number of posts that we want which should be 10 now instead of passing in posts that's in our state uh we're going to go ahead and pass in current posts like that. All right. So if I save and we go back, now we only get 10 posts. Okay? And if we want to change this to 5, now we only get 5. Okay? So that part is done. I'm going to change it back to 10. That part's done, but we have no way to actually get to page 2 or 3 or any other page. So that's where the pagination comes in. Uh now I want to create a separate component for it. We could put everything in this file, but that that's kind of messy. So in components, let's create a new file called pagination.js. And you can use this in in all your projects, you know, just take this same code and and throw it in there. I mean, there's there's react this pagination packages you can use. You can install with npm, but you want to try to re reduce the amount of packages that you have if you can do it yourself. So let's do RACF we'll create a functional component. This is going to take in a couple props. Whoops. It's going to take in a couple props. It's going to take in posts per page and total posts. And then let's see. We're going to go right here and create a variable called page numbers, which is going to be at first just an empty array, and then we're going to do a for loop here. and let's set uh let's set our index to 1 and then what we want to do is say if index is less than or equal to the total posts divided by the post per page but we want to round that up so we're going to wrap it in math.seal and then total posts uh divided by post per page so the two props that were passed in and then of course we need to increment i and then in here we're just going to take the page numbers array and we're going to push on to it the index okay so those will get that'll give us the page numbers the correct amount of page numbers and then down here let's change this to a nav we're just going to use some bootstrap markup we'll have a ul with the class of pagination and then we want to loop through the page numbers So page numbers dot map. We'll say for each page number, let's output an li, and we need to. This is a list, so we need to give this a key. And for the key, I'll just use the number because that's going to be unique. And we'll give this a class name of page item, just bootstrap syntax. And then in here we'll have an a tag. I'm just going to set it to exclamation number sign because we're going to have a a click event here. And then let's give this a class name of page link. Again, just bootstrap syntax. And then in here we just want the number, the page number. All right. So, let's save that. 
and now we just need to bring in pagination into our app js and we also need to pass this stuff in as props so let's go to app js let's bring in pagination and down here let's say right below posts pagination and we want to pass in the posts per page and then we also want the total posts and we can get that simply by taking the posts that we get from the API and just getting the length all right so let's save that let's go back and there we go So if I click if I click nothing you notice that nothing's happening we haven't added that yet but we we're getting the correct number of pages here. If I change the post per page to 5 we should get more numbers. So if we go that down now we have 20 different numbers. So it's going to give you the correct amount. All right, but I'm going to change it back to 10. So the last thing we have to do is make it actually change the page. So back in our pagination JS, we're going to have an uh, an on click right here and I'm going to have this uh let's pass in an arrow function here and then we're going to call a paginate method and I'm going to pass in the page number. Now, this is going to get called as a prop. We're going to pass in paginate as a prop. So up here we need to say paginate. All right, so we'll save that and then back in app.js we need to add that as a prop. So paginate. Oh, why can I spell this? Paginate and then when when it's clicked, whatever we put in here is going to happen and we're going to call another method in this file called paginate. Okay? Or function. So let's put this right here. I'll just say change page. I'll say const paginate. And this is actually going to be very very simple. We're just going to call set current page and we're going to pass in page number. Now this page number is just coming from this right here. I called it number here. because it's we called it number here so we're passing that in as an argument and we're catching it um actually we need to pass that in here like that okay so that should work let's save it and we're actually not using the set post per page right here so we can actually get rid of that okay so let's go back to our browser here and if i click on 2 you can see it changes 3 shows us the next 10 and there we go and and if you change your post per page then this this will adapt and it'll work so that's pretty simple uh implementation of of pagination uh, i might do another video where we do some kind of full stack you know dealing with uh serving a certain amount of resources through the database from the back end but this is a a nice and simple way to do it when you're dealing with an api where you're not getting thousands and thousands of uh resources. All right, so hopefully you guys like this. If you did, please leave a like and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, one of the best if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com/freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it. You get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates, client proposals, HTML and CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community and much more. So use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off today.